Welcome everybody. I'm excited to welcome you to our open SAP course, Get Started with Innovation Culture. The recent pandemic shows us how helpless we sometimes feel if the unexpected hits us. And I'm sure that everybody's impacted, businesses, but also society. Companies who invested in intelligent technologies before the crisis were more competitive within the crisis and will be more resilient afterwards. Digital transformation is not anymore an option. It's mandatory. Everybody is driving in this direction. But important are also the people. You see what impact the crisis had on people. You cannot meet in person anymore. You work at home. This requires new ways of doing business and even more focus on people. Technology is the driver for digital transformation. And if you look at SAP and if you look at intelligent enterprises, we help to run businesses end to end. From lead to cash, from hire to retire, to run to operational data. But also it's all about the experience, the experience of our customers' customers, the experience about products, the experience of employees. And this all needs to be connected in a very intelligent way, using also our business technology platform. Now, what is the role of the business technology platform in this game? All SAP products are built on top of one innovation platform, the business technology platform. It's four main components. It has analytics, analytic cloud, it has SAP HANA as the database. It has intelligent technologies like machine learning, but also a development platform like the SAP Cloud Platform. And the business technology platform is used for our customers to extend their existing solutions, for example, and to create fast value. And this is key in the current situation, to be innovative, to be fast, to develop in the existing environment fast value to the customers. But that was all about technology and about products. Culture is the enabler of digital transformation. And that's what the course is really all about. It's all about people changing the way how you work, applying technologies and products to make innovation real. Now, my name is Andreas Hauser. I lead the Global App House team. We have lots of locations all over the world, meanwhile. And I'm really very proud and excited to be in this role now since a long time. And uh, what we do, we apply a human-centered approach to innovation to transform business data into real customer value by leveraging SAP's business technology platform, making innovation real. And this is always connected with existing environments on the customer side, with SAP ERP, with S4HANA, with success factors and all of that. Our goal is to make innovation real, get it in the hands of end users, because only then innovation is successful. And we record the session here in our app house in Heidelberg. We want it to be authentic. And if you sometimes hear uh, background noises, this is just you because we are located close to the railway station and Heidelberg University Hospital. Um, it's just authentic. And uh, um, which situation a company is facing currently. There are a lot of external factors, eh? and it's not easy to run a business. In new employee mindset, you have young talents, early talents getting into the companies, having different perspectives. The speed of change is enormous. If I personally look back 30 years ago when I started working in business and compare it with now, how fast things change, it's unbelievable. Um, there are new markets, new players coming overnight and revolutionizing the market. Global companies, everybody can easily become a global company, leveraging the technologies. But now also, because everything is getting into technology, there's also a big topic of uh, security and the risks that are related to this. And you hear this constantly in the news. Technology changes every year, new technology is coming up. 
And it's unbelievable what's meanwhile possible. Uh, but there are also a lot of interconnected global systems. That means customers work with their customers, with their partners, um, and, and companies team up. It's a completely different behavior. And finally, the consumer behavior. You know, before the pandemic, you went into the shop, went to the store. Now, you couldn't get out. That means you went to an online shop. And the consumer behavior changed overnight. Yeah? And there are many cases where consumer behavior changes significantly. These are all external factors that have an impact on your business. But there are also internal factors within the company. And very often, companies have a silo mentality. Yeah? Department one, two, three, that don't really work together, have a silo thinking. There is a lack of focusing on the end user, the people who use the products. And also low employee engagement. And this is also due that you have multiple different um, uh, people with different ages in the company, young people, older people. You have, the topic is diversity also, people with different mindsets, with different, uh, different um, ethnographies and uh, that work together. Now, innovation is an opportunity. You need to find the right opportunity to innovate. And I tell you, this is not easy. You will only be successful if you find a combination of feasibility, which means the technology part, viability, which means it's a business behind it, and also desirability, it's about the people. It's not going to help you if you have your cool technology that nobody can use and you cannot make business with. It's not sufficient if you have a great idea to start a new business, but you cannot execute and people cannot use it. And that means it's all about finding the right opportunity to innovate. And therefore, design thinking is an approach to innovate by bringing the multidisciplinary teams together and let them collaborate as one team. Now, design thinking starts with people. We start with stepping into the shoes of the people who are the target audience. Let's now look at SAP's journey. Our journey started in 2004 when Hasso Blattner went on stage at Sapphire, our big custom invent, and said, SAP now does design thinking. And we asked him afterwards why he did it. And he mentioned that, you know, when they founded the company, he was as a developer sitting at the customer beside the end user, programming, showing it to user, iterating. And it wasn't called design thinking at the time, but design thinking re remembered him how they started the company. And in 2004, he had a feeling that SAP unlearned how to work with customers and the end users. This is where a big initiative was started. In 2011, we already scaled this globally. We trained lots of people in development, thousands of people in sales and consulting um, to spread the methodology. In 2013, we even went one step further. We started offering it as a service for our customers to help customers to become more innovative and creative as an organization, but also helping to make innovation real. In 2016, we even offered services to build up innovation teams on the customer side. And there were lots of examples um, where we started with customers like Rolls-Royce, MTU, Cheers Caltex. You hear about this later on a little bit more. In 2019, um, we went one step further. We partnered with Klitschko Ventures, you know, Vladimir Klitschko, the boxer, and we uh, um, we created a training where we focus on building innovation leaders. Because as an innovation leader, it's a lot about the personality and for sure also understanding and knowing design thinking. And Vladimir Klitschko also brought his professional experience into this kind of training. And this year in 2020, we extended even design thinking methodology and combined design thinking with enterprise architecture. Because I tell you one thing, it doesn't help you to just be creative, create post-its without making it real.
It's all about making innovation real, getting into the hands of end users. And this is where we combine design thinking and enterprise architecture. Now, what are the key elements of innovation culture? And it's always the combination. We start with people. You need to invest in people with the right skills, focusing on, uh, on the people, business, but also technology skills and having the right mindset. It's about the place. And here we are in App House in Heidelberg, for example, all walls are writable. It fosters creativity. The process, it's about a human-centered approach to innovation where we involve the people from the beginning to the end. Then, to be very honest, without technology, you can have a cool culture, but you never make it real. That means you need to have products and technologies to convert your ideas into reality in real business value. And last but not least, what I learned, because I lead now UX and innovation teams since more than 20 years, it requires a different kind of leadership style. It's not anymore about the top-down approach. I'm going to talk about this in a second a little bit more. That means these are the five elements, the five drivers that are important to look at if you talk about innovation culture. Now let's start, start with people. Um, you need to have a diverse team. Young people, experienced people, people with different cultural backgrounds, but also people who understand design, how, who know how to ask the end users the questions in the right way and interpret what they really mean. People with the right technology skills. If you want to build innovations, want to use latest technologies, you need to have people who know the latest technologies. But you need to also have people who understand the business. Because it doesn't help you if you have a cool product that people like, but you don't have a business with it. That means you, it's always the combination of all these three elements. Then if you look at the place, and uh, if I look at our app house in Heidelberg, it's an old tobacco building. You walk through, uh, when you get in, you walk by a Winsung studio. It doesn't really look like SAP. And I tell you, when, I, when we started uh, building up the, the space, um, I told the team, you know what? I give you a budget, and you create it, design it on your own. There is one rule, don't go over budget. And I tell you what happened. The people started going into second-hand shops, um, going into Home Depot or Bauhaus in Germany, and start building up things on their own. And then it became their place. That's all about employee empowerment. It has a huge impact on employee engagement. But I tell you one thing, don't start with the space. It's all about the people and with the process. And I'm applying a human-centered approach, it means you start with explore. You start where are innovation opportunities and you bring together all people with business technology, with design skills, um, within your organization, helping identifying a case that is innovative, that creates value, and to be honest, look for something where you can get a fast success. Don't look for the project that takes two years because time is are really very fast. That means look for an innovation opportunity that you can implement fast. Then you get into discover. You step into the shoes of the end users. And ideally, you go with them on site. In the pandemic, it wasn't possible. That means very rapidly we created um, a toolkit for remote collaboration and even doing these kind of interviews remotely. Then if you go into design, you visualize, you create UI mockups how the future solution is going to look like. You test with end users. And even in parallel, you have enterprise architects looking what is technically feasible and making sure that what you design can also be implemented. And last but not least, you're going to deliver. It's about making it real. You typically start small. And one example, we worked at Costco. They started in one bakery. And then they extended to more and more bakeries over time when it goes into run and scale. The process is the fundament. You need to have the technology to make it possible. But you need to have the people who have the skills in running projects in such a way. Now, talking about technology, it's unbelievable what is possible with machine learning, with blockchain, with AR, with VR. And there are even new things coming out. 
You see examples where they are experimenting that drones are bringing your packages. Look at, and there are new challenges with technology uh, coming up. And therefore I think the technology part um, is really key to also look at when you talk about changing a culture, um, it's really a combination of that. And last but not least, it's about leadership. The top-down model is not working anymore. It is too slow. Uh, it means you need to react fast and there's only one way that you empower employees to make decisions. This requires a different leadership style. And I tell you, I learned a lot what works and what doesn't work. We went to many extremes, but um, it requires that you run the team, your organization in a real different way. Buzzwords are future of work or new work, where it's about empowering employees, but also be sure that the employees are accountable to really deliver. And uh, I think the leadership, this leadership part um, is really key. You need to have passionate people who drive the topic um, because they believe in it. Um, because I tell you, there will be many hurdles you get over time and you need to find the ways how do you navigate the situation within the company? Let's make two examples. Uh, Cheers Caltex, it's an um, oil uh, refining company. And you know that um, looking at the, at the current uh, situation, they are under big pressure. Uh, that means we started enabling the organization with design thinking. We trained people in uh, probably 12 to 5 percent of the employees in design thinking, trained design thinking coaches, and we helped them building up a culture of innovation within the organization. The second example is uh, MTU Rolls-Royce, and you know they are building these big diesel engines, for example, for ships. And uh, they want to, they have to turn their business model into a service-oriented model. And they did an amazing job with this. Uh, that means they looked for new revenue streams, new opportunities, and they built up an innovation team. And we supported them with this. They're applying a human-centered approach to innovation, an agile way how to develop. And also we were running a couple of projects where really made innovation real. For example, with the SAP Cloud Platform, with SAP Experience Management, to really showcase it's not just culture or not just design thinking, and doing workshops and creating post-its, it's really about creating value. Um, and you know, I'm leading now design teams, innovation teams in more than 20 years. And we at SAP gained a lot of experience. We, we decided to bring all our knowledge into tools that we offer for free to our customers and our partners. And we combine all of that in our innovation culture toolkit. Check it out and you will get more and more knowledge during the course um, of this open SAP course. We have tools like scenes that helps you create user journeys in a very, very nice way, easy to understand way. We have tools like our innovation culture assessment that helps you to assess your organization on which level you are or a tool to design a bot. Um, there are lots of interesting articles, lots of knowledge Feel free, you find them in all dimensions, people, process, place, technology, and leadership. Now, I would like to ask Matthias to join. Matthias, thank you very much. Uh, and Matthias is going to do an introduction in what you're going to see in this curriculum. Matthias, can you also talk a little bit about yourself? Yes, thank you, Andreas. So my name is Matthias. I'm a strategic design consultant working at the App House. And um, together with my colleague Edda, we will be uh, the main instructors in that course for you. So um, here you can see an overview of um, the, the um, topics we will cover over the next three weeks. So you can see we will cover all the five enablers of innovation culture. In week one, so also in the next unit, we will start to focus on people, on mindsets, on how to build up innovation teams. Um, we will then in week two continue with place, so how you can foster creativity and collaboration virtually as well in your, as in, in your physical place. Um, we will continue with process, so what is uh, a, a nice approach to uh, drive innovation also at scale in a um, corporate environment. Um, 
Then in week three, we will start with technology, with um, how you can adopt an agile approach to create POCs, to create MVPs, how architectural thinking helps you with doing this, and as well how, how you can um, use the business technology platform to make the intelligent enterprise real. And we will talk about leadership. <clears throat> so how can you take up a mindset of a, of a leader in that times? Um, how can you empower your teams and how you can, can you also at scale um, foster innovation culture in your company? And um, <clears throat> here you can see a detailed overview. So we have for each of these five enablers, we have um, two units. One unit um, usually covers um, the basics and um, the other units brings it more into, into the context, how you can, can you apply this in a, in a corporate environment. And um, we have also a final unit where we um, uh, will help you as well to get started, where we will give you um, some hints um, how you get started to um, foster innovation culture in your environment. Um, I'm really looking forward to um, spend the course together with you. Um, the next unit, it starts with people. We'll talk about um, people and an innovation mindset and innovation teams. Yes. So Andreas, do you have some final words? Yes. I wish you an amazing course. Um, enjoy the time. Um, leverage the, the, the knowledge that you get. Uh, and please also send us your feedback in the forum. I would love that this becomes a dialogue between you and us. And uh, have a good time. Enjoy the course with Matthias and the other presenters. Have a good time.